Hey guys, Rebel Engine 95 recording live from your local county prison cell. Um, this fight's a bit of a weird one, and I feel like it would be a disservice, and also it would defeat the purpose of doing it without giving an explanation. So, um, today, and this is not of any super, I mean, I don't want to say it like this, because this sounds terrible and disrespectful, but... This isn't like a cataclysmic event or anything, but for those of you who don't know, today, uh, voice actor Kirby Morrow died. Um, he wasn't a, a, an especially renowned voice actor. He was, you know, he, uh, he was in, he was in the ocean dub for Dragon Ball Z for Goku. He was, um, he was in Gundam Wing, um, and arguably is two most... Well, definitely one is, but the, arguably is his second uh, most. Uh, I, I'm this this fight today is gonna be basically just for the sake of doing it. It's the day of. I have a day off. I can do an episode, and I figure it'd be nice to do a little tribute thing. Not like again, I didn't really know the guy or anything. I didn't like. I don't hold him in any particular renowned. But, um, you know, it just sucks that, like, we got Half Demon Princess dubbed after, you know, a little bit, finally, and Final Act took forever to get dubbed, and, you know, he only got to do, like, a little bit in Half Demon Princess and all that shit, which sucks, and so, like, it, you know, I figured might as well, like, you, it, it's only gonna be the day it happened once, and today's the day I was gonna do an episode, so... Uh, at first I wanted to do, for those of you who don't know, he was the English voice actor from Moroku from, uh, Inuyasha, and he was also the, uh, voice actor for Cyclops and X-Men Evolution. So, I, and those are probably his two most famous roles. Moroku is definitely his most famous role, but his second most famous role is probably Cyclops and X-Men Evolution, because that show was, uh, pretty popular, funny enough. Um, so... Like I said, if you're thinking this is a fight that has, like, some amazing, uh, you know, oh, there's, this is so fitting, and this, you know, these characters, like, basically I'm saying, if you actually took the time to watch the first three minutes of this video, uh, you'll know that, you'll know not to complain about why are these two fighting each other, and why is it, these two don't have anything in common, what's the connection, they don't, that isn't even a good matchup, blah, blah, blah. That's not the fucking point. It's I'm doing this basically for the sake of doing it. Just to be like, hey, it'd be cool that, you know, on the day that this happened, let's pay tribute the day of rather than a week or two where it won't mean anything. Right? Um, so I figured why not do it. So the today's fight, after all this explanation, is going to be Moroku from Inuyasha versus Cyclops from Marvel X-Men specifically. Again, no reason these two need to fight each other. I'd be shocked if this fight actually happened. This there I I can almost guarantee you it won't happen. Um there's zero like there's really no connection between them. There's no they're not even similarly power based or anything. It's just the fact that you know, why not do it just for, to, you know, tribute to the guy who died. Um, so anyway, starting with Moroku, he, so Moroku is, you know, trained his life, uh, as a monk, you know, man of the cloth, that whole thing, and, uh, the one moral failing he has is that he's, you know, kind of a fucking lecher and a womanizer, but that's, you know, whatever. live your life, man. I mean, you're a monk, so the you're not supposed to live your life, but that's another point. Um, you know, so, but because of that, he is, uh, trained in many different spiritual practices like exorcism and, you know, things like that. So, um, he's been an essential asset in the fight against a demon lord and fighting demons every week. Um, so he's got things like his staff, which he can use to, which, you know, is a, is a, is a, uh, spiritual, you know, item, so it can, you know, it's especially effective against ghosts and demons and whatnot. He carries, um, spiritual seals with him that, um, you know, can be 
place to restrict a demon's power um, and, and whatnot. And then there's the most dangerous weapon in his, in his arsenal, which entirely justifies his part on the team, and that is the curse that Naraku left on him, which is his wind tunnel. Uh, his The wind tunnel is a void uh, in his palm, which was originally designed to just make him a walking kind of like, you know, just a walking curse of destruction that would, you know, wipe out everything he loved. He couldn't go near anyone that would eventually, uh, abs you know, absorb. It, it's, it's a void. It's like a, it's like an, a, a vacuum, like a black hole almost in his hand that when he opens it just sucks in everything in his immediate path. Um, and then, but luckily, you know, in, he was able to conceal it, you know, he's able to hold it with like holy cloth or something like that. And it does, it's not just active at all times, but whenever he unwraps it, it, um, you know, it'll just, it's like a, like I said, it's like a, a vacuum, like a black hole where it just kind of absorbs everything into like an abyss and, and destroys it. Now, uh, the counter that Naraku had for this was that, you know, he would use poisonous demonic insects that would, you know, that would, uh, poison him and tear him out, tear his wind tunnel open and everything. Um, but essentially, if you get caught in the wind tunnel and you don't escape, you go in there, you die. You're, that's it. You know, end of story. That's a wind con. Um, a wind con. <laughs> But yeah, um, I mean, he's in very good shape, but he's not comparing physically to somebody like um, Sango, who is, you know, a demon hunter and has been, you know, training her whole life, or Inuyasha, who is, you know, part demon and therefore superhumanly strong. But, you know, he does hang out with these guys, you know, and he does, you know, he does make himself useful. So, all in all, great guy. Scott Summers. Cyclops. For something, for some, for a character so one note, there's way too much to say about him. Funny enough, um, the fact that he almost destroyed the world on several occasions to save his wife and/or daughter or unborn son, the fact that he's kind of lost his mind many times over, he's kind of uh, you know done all this other shit. But essentially, Scott Summers is a tortured soul who can't interact with the. I guess if anything. I guess if any, there's any connection, it's the fact that these two both have powers that, you know, are kind of, like, curse-like and prevent them from... But then again, that's, like, every X-Men character, so what the fuck. Um, so Scott Summers has his optic beams. That's his mutant power. Is that any time he opens his eyes, his optic rays will generate and, and, you know, blast this, you know, immense amount of power out and, um... And, you know, it'll destroy... They're, they're concussive. They're not, like, heat-based lasers. They're concussive blasts, like, kinetic blasts. Um, but they're still capable of destroying, like, buildings. And when they're amplified, have been known to be able to vaporize entire cities. Um, I've even... I believe I've even seen him, like, shoot it into space at one point. Um, it does have a limit. Like, he can't just keep his eyes open and it'll stay shooting. It's like... It's part of his, like, actual body's natural energy that it creates it, but... I have a fucking thing on my... <laughs> That's why I'm scratching so much. Um, but... It, you know, it is something that it is incredibly powerful and has, you know, been able to stop, you know, mutants at the level of, like, you know... Not stop the Juggernaut, but it's been able to, like, knock Juggernaut over. It's been able to, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hit some pretty heavy X-Men characters... It combined with Iron Man's um, repulsor rays, which are both kinetic rays that are not supposed to, like, you know, be deadly. Both of them somehow were able to completely vaporize Wolverine. That was an Ultimate Marvel, so whether you want to consider that canon or not. Um, or an alternate version of Wolverine, at least. So, yeah. And also, one other thing that I think most people, you know... Uh, ignore about this guy is this guy's fucking ripped like holy shit so he's like he's punched holes in brick walls he's got like so much tonage he's I, I believe it was like he's an olympic level athlete or something like that like that's just how like amazingly trained he is to the point where he's like 
been able to fight Wolverine hand to hand. Um, I mean, he would use the laser eventually, but like, you know, he like the dude is fucking rip. He's jacked. He's Chris Redfield. And also it's, you know, he's, um, I mean, he's not like an expert martial artist or anything and he doesn't have, you know, centuries of battle experience like some of the people he hangs around with, but yeah, he is. I mean, that's another thing that kind of connects them is that even though they're both just kind of normal dudes, for the most part, they do end up hanging around these exceptionally powerful people. But again, I don't think these, unless, you know, Screw Attack has the same idea I do, they're not going to make this fight. So, um, yeah, anyway, how do I think this fight would go? Well, oddly enough, any other factors between the two involving, like, you know, like, the physical status and everything like that, like, I guess Cyclops has more combat experience and is definitely in, you know, physically stronger, but... An advantage like that would probably contribute to a win, but it's kind of a non-factor in a fight between two people with literal just kill the other guy buttons, you know, at their disposal. Like, wind tunnel, both the wind tunnel and the optic blasts would basically end this fight. A full power optic blast would definitely kill, uh, you know, Moraku, or Moroku, and, um you know, the wind tunnel would kill Cyclops. The real question is, how would they interact? Well, the optic blasts aren't like a true laser where they operate like light. So something with a black hole effect, and again, the wind tunnel is not literally a black hole, it just acts very similarly to one. But we don't see it absorbing like light or anything. We see it, I, I, we, have we seen it absorb energy? Has it absorbed like a, has he absorbed, like, a like an energy-based attack with it before? That's my question. Basically, would the wind tunnel be able to absorb the optic blast, let alone the full power of the optic blast? If so, then, well, it's gonna happen, and there's nothing he can really do about it otherwise. But if so, Cyclops wins. If not... Moroku probably wins just because, like, once that wind tunnel comes out, you die because there's nothing you can do to prevent it. You're just going to get crushed into oblivion being sucked into it. So, and for those of you who are going to say, like, well, he doesn't have it anymore because they beat Mur... Fuck, that's the whole point of it being there, is to have the wind tunnel. Of course we're gonna, I would give him the wind tunnel. Yeah, and obviously nothing else Moroku has... Or Moroku has... I keep saying Moroku because of Noraku, but... Nothing else Moroku has really matters because, you know, Cyclops isn't a demon. And I'm not counting Marvel zombies. Cyclops isn't a demon, so, like, you know, a staff is just a metal staff at that point. The seals are just pieces of paper. Chants are just words. You know, they don't really do anything against him. So the wind tunnel would be the last resort. But basically, I would say most likely I think Cyclops would win this. Which is a shame, because I like Moroku better as a character. But probably the reason it's his most famous thing is the fact that this is naturally more appealing. But yeah, rip to, uh, you know, rip to Kirby. And, uh, yeah. It's kind of a fun fight to do. I, mean, I gotta admit, I, I didn't do any real research. I just happened to know the characters that, you know, like, it's Cyclops. Everyone knows Cyclops. And I love Inuyasha, so, like, you know. It's, I know Moroku well enough that I can just do a, do an analysis as is. But anyway, um, yeah, this was fun to do, and next week I'll have an actual fucking fight that is, probably has a likelihood of happening. But anyway, from Belenja95, see ya.